uh, demineralized water tank. Um, the water is purified, like I said, in the lab back there and demineralized. And when we pump to this position, they also have uh, one that's 120,000 gallon pounds per unit one. And that one over there is 125,000. You'll see it as you step back here. But if unit two is online, uh, and probably unit three, if it's online, it will use this much water in a day. That's how much it uses. It uses about 50, I want to say 50 gallons a minute, well, 57 <coughs> gallons a minute um, for NOx <coughs> and, and pollution suppression and for flame temperature, or uh, cooling the flame is what it is. So that's how it works. Um, <coughs> over here, it's kind of unique transformer. It's a, it is a, what we call, just stay right there and I'll explain to you, it's, it's called, it's, it's kind of a reverse transformer. It's something I've not seen. And I've only been in the business for 10 years, so. But um, what it's doing now is that it's pulling in power from the grid and powering unit two. When it's ready to go, it'll push power out on the grid. So it has a two-way hmm. two, yeah. uh, capability. <laughs> unit three has the same, and you can kind of see it looks very similar. To unit two. So unit three has that as well. Uh, the box that's over here is a generator breaker. That's when they close it in. Uh, that's the actual breaker that actually uses it. So power is live up to this point, closes in, and flows on out to the grid. On, uh, on top, this is also an auxiliary transformer fed for gear and it helps feed. The first building is our controls. Uh, it's actually the control room. Uh, the second building is the breaker, the high, the high energy breakers. The, uh, I think it's 13. I think it's 13.4 breakers in there. The next building is a chiller building, and we have compressors that chill glycol. That, and those, on a day like today, uh, that glycol is chilled, and it passes, there's water that's chilled through there, and the air that's drawn in from the top of the air compartment is chilled to about 48 degrees. And of course, the cooler air is more what? More efficient, yeah, but it's, is it less dense or more dense? Uh, it's less more dense. Than, than less dense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and that's that's the point I'm making. What we what, what we do in Unit One is that we manage water. We take water and we purify it, and then we heat it and pump it and push it into the boiler and heat it some more, turn it into steam, and then once it's steamed, we exhaust it and then take it and heat it and push it. This Unit One manages water. Unit twos and threes, they manage air, which is very nice because that means you can plant them anywhere. You can throw those in a jungle if you have enough water to demineralize water. And that's not a lot. I mean, it's a lot, but, you know, that's 48 million watts of power. You know, that's, that's a lot of power. So you can see these gas turbines springing up in, in rows out in the middle of nowhere. They don't really need a lake or a river to help condense that steam. Hmm. Uh, if you see a power plant that is near a water system, whether it's a river or a lake, chances are it's a steam generator. If you see these things out in the middle of the field and you're flying over and you see these little things lined up in a row and they look like little boxes, chances are they're gas turbines. And you can plant them anywhere. Which makes it nice because, I mean, if you're trying to get permits for things, water permits, air permits, you know, you can find a middle of nowhere and put it, whereas if you're putting it in here, you know, those fans out there, I didn't talk about the fans on the gas, on the, our generator, you can't see them from here. But those are, uh, I think there's 1,700 horsepower. And those things turn on, they sound like a jet engine. These things, this is a jet engine, and when it's on, you can't hear. You cannot hear. From here, it sounds like, shh, that's all the louder it is. I wouldn't be shouting at all. So, let's go take a look at it. Remember I told you about the, I was talking to some of you guys about the mineral lube oil we had problems, and that if you didn't get it, shut down. The, the problem with these things and, and is that if you don't, if you have a problem, you have a time limit. The computer has built in a safety thing that if you don't hit it within a certain period of time, if you cannot address that problem, correct that problem, it'll shut itself down and then it locks itself out. It's a protection system. On this unit, we can jump around it, we can figure out how to get around it, but this is, it's hardwired into the computer. And so if you don't address the problem, you could lock it out, and then you have to explain to Dan Wilkerson why his, while he lost, what do you say, $10,000? Is that what he earned? Last two hours, you know? You know? So, 
We had a problem. That skid that's there, it has a little, that's actually a vent on top, a motorized driven vent. That's called the mineral lube oil system. Is that synthetic lube or mineral? That's mineral. Mineral. That was having a problem over the, when we first installed it, it was heating up too much and it would trip it off. And then you got to cool it down. Well, how do you cool it down when it's 115 degrees out here? You stand there with a water hose on the tank is what they tried first. You know, yeah, a high school graduate, what do you want? So anyway, we just did that. Finally, we decided to open up both coolers and put a larger oil cooler system in, which is tied into our cooling tower over here. And then they built a shed over top of it, ah, which keeps the sun off it, which keeps us. So we kind of figured out a way to get around the problem that we had. Uh, the new unit does not have that. The new unit has, has its own, and we'll probably build a shed over it, I'm sure. There we go. Let's, uh, let's walk out and take a look at the engine. Okay, it's going to get hot again. Sorry. We'll find a shady spot. You'll hear a cool down fan blowing because the unit just came offline an hour or so ago. That's the actual gas turbine. That's the actual engine, that's correct. Wow. wow. Sounds like a jet engine, doesn't it? And it's on right now? No, it's not on. Oh. No, it's a cool down. It's yes. on. Yes. It is, let me tell you what it is. This will sound impressive, and I, I was going to memorize it, and I thought, there's no need for this. But let me, let me dazzle you here. Um, units 2 and 3 are General Electric LM6000 aero derivative combustion gas turbine with generator rate is 49 megawatts. The combustion turbine are jet engines derivative GE CF6 80C2 aircraft engines, which are currently used on Boeing 747, Boeing 767, McDonald's MD11, Airbus 300 aircraft. Nancy 2 was constructed in 2003, Nancy 3 2009. Da -da. Basically, let me get a little close and I'll show you. Everything. From that slab to that corner is jet engine. That is the engine itself. What you see going up this way is called the SBR, or Selective Reduction Catalyst. Very fancy word we'll talk about in a minute. You have the stack on the end, and on that side over here, you have the actual generator. So we have the generator, 